In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up Adrenaline on your PS Vita, which is an emulator for PS1 and PSP games. And along with that, I'm going to show you how to play these games directly from your PS Vita menu. Now normally, you would need a PC to do most of this, however, I'm going to be showing you a way to set up all of the apps you need without one. And that means the only requirement for this guide is that you have your PS Vita homebrew. And if you haven't done that yet, I have a video right here to help you get started. I also highly recommend getting the SD to Vita adapter along with a micro SD card to expand your storage. That way you can have as many games as you want, essentially. So we're gonna get started by getting three apps. The first one is gonna be Adrenaline. We are also going to get the Auto Plugin 2. And lastly, the Bubble Manager. Now there's multiple ways to get these apps, but the easiest is by using the browser. And we're gonna be doing a method similar to how we homebrewed our Vita. So let's go into the address and just type in exactly what I do. Dev. And once you have this inputted in your web address, just hit enter and it should take you here. So this is basically a modified version of what website we used in the actual homebrew guide. So we're gonna press continue, press okay, and it should load into this screen. And all we're gonna do is go down to install quick app downloader and press select. It will download the app. Once this has all done, you can hit the home button and close out. And now we should see quick app downloader right here. So let's load into there, start it up. If the app is highlighted in green, that means you already have it. And if it's white, it means you don't have it. So let's go ahead and start with Adrenaline plus the .pbp firmware. So let's select that. Now Adrenaline is also something you can get in the Vita DB app as well, which is a homebrew browser. But unfortunately, Auto Plugin 2 is not available there. So that is why we're using this app here and it's downloaded. As you can see, if we go down, Adrenaline is now highlighted green. So let's do the same with Auto Plugin 2. Select that one and let it install as well. Let's wake it up by tapping it if it's taken a while. All right, and there we go. That one should also be highlighted green now, as you can see. And the last one is Adrenaline Bubble Manager. And what this app does is let you play your games from your Vita menu. So it's optional, but I do highly recommend it. So let's download that one as well. So once you have all three of those, we can press the home button and close out. And you should see them all on your Vita menu. So we'll start off by running Adrenaline and we'll get the emulator itself set up. So start it up. If that happened, that's all good. That is the reason we got auto plugin too. So let's load back in. It's called a double touch glitch. And now if my camera will focus, all it's asking is to install the PSP 6.61 firmware to your memory card. So just press X and it will go ahead and do that. That part really makes you feel like a hacker, doesn't it? And once you see the firmware has been installed successfully, press X and it will boot into your new PSP environment. So this is basically like having an actual PSP. So we're just gonna run through the initial setup. You can even add a nickname, Sneaky. Do it, do it, hit like, please. And once you have that all completed, it will load into your PSP environment. Now here you can change the settings if you please. You can even go down to theme settings and change your color, but I'm gonna leave it the same. It's all good, it doesn't bother me much because I'm gonna be playing my games from my Vita menu. But now that we have all of this set up, press the home button twice to exit, close Adrenaline, and now we're gonna run Auto Plugin 2. So what Auto Plugin 2 does is basically stop the double touch glitch from happening with Adrenaline. So load up Auto Plugin 2, press start, and this is a very, very useful app to have for a modded Vita. We are gonna go into Vita plugins, install plugins, and you should see one of them for Adrenaline with fixed double touch. That is the one we want. So just select that one and it should install the plugin. Press okay, press select to install. And now there's a green dot there to signify we have it installed. And then you can press back, back, and then go all the way down to exit. And once we exit, our PS Vita will restart. 
And if we go back to Adrenaline and we open it up, you'll see that the double touch issue is resolved. So now that we have Adrenaline fully set up and ready to go, we need to add our games. So now this part, you technically can do it without a PC, but I'm not going to be talking about that in this video. There is a certain app you can get that can help you out there. So I am personally going to be setting up my games via computer. So don't get mad that I said no PC in the title because you can do it without PC, but I'm gonna be setting up my games with my computer. So I'm gonna double tap the home button, exit out. So what I'm gonna be doing is using Vita Shell to connect my Vita to my computer using the charger port, which is to USB. But you can also just take out your SD to Vita card and place your micro SD card in your computer as well. But I'm gonna be doing this, so let's open up Vita Shell. And before we connect it, Using our cable, my SD to Vita is in UXO. I'm gonna press start, and here our USB device. We're gonna change it to my SD to Vita. So you can choose here which storage device you want to open up on your PC. So I'm gonna press back, press select, and now we're going to plug it in, and then also plug it into your computer. So now whether you plug your actual SD card into your computer or through a cable like me, you should see it pop up in your storage devices. So let's head on in. Now the first time you do this, you may need to unhide the hidden folders, which if you do not see PSPMU, then you need to do this. So go to view, show, and make sure hidden items are checked and that should do the trick. However, the first time I've ever done this, it did not work. So I had to go and dig for a solution. So if you still don't see the proper folders, you may have to do this command prompt. So if you go to your Windows icon, just type in command, bring up this screen and back on this PC, my SD card is in drive E. So I'm just gonna do E colon and then switch to that storage device. So this is my SD card. Type in CD space slash enter. And now I just copied and pasted from the Reddit page right here, but I will have the copy and paste in the description if this is something that you have to do. So you can copy that and then paste this exact thing in and then press enter. I've already done that and that solved my problem and hopefully it can help solve yours. If even that doesn't happen, then your SD card might be corrupted. But once you can see your PSPMU folder right here, head on in and let's set up the games. So let's start with the PlayStation 1 games and these games do have to be in a .pbp format. And please do not ask where to get these games for free. So for convenience, I'm going to drag my .pbp PlayStation 1 games inside of this folder. And then while they're transferring on, let's go find the title ID, which is something we need in order to set these games up properly. So on Google, just type the game and title ID. The first link should have your answer, the PlayStation data center in my case. And here is the information that we need. So make sure you have the proper region for whichever game you have backed up and highlight the serial number. Copy it. So now that we have the serial number, other known as the title ID copied for Crash Bandicoot, I'm gonna create a new folder, paste it in without the hyphen so that it looks like this, and then drag the file inside. Go into that folder and what we're gonna do is rename by right clicking and rename and just call it eBoot, all caps. Just like that, press enter. And now our Crash Bandicoot is set up. And now my Crash Bandicoot game is set up. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with Ridge Racer Revolution. So back to Google, title ID. In this case, our search got to game FAQs. As long as you have the proper region ID, then you should be good to go. Or just use the same website. As you can see right here, I'm gonna highlight the same one, the serial number, copy it, I'll minimize, make a new folder, paste, take away the hyphen, and we're good. And now I can drag this game inside. And lastly, change it to eBoot. So just like that, I have two games set up, and now we can get to the PSP games. And this is much, much easier. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the root, just to avoid confusion, we are going into the PSP MU folder. 
and in this folder we're going to right click create a new folder and call it ISO all caps. This is where we're going to place our PSP games and it's much much easier setup. Go inside and simply place your ISO files inside this folder. And there we go, they're transferred over so as long as they're ISO format you are good to go. So once you have all the games you want all in your PSP MU folder right here, we are good to go. We can eject our SD card and place it back into our Vita or in my case, since I used the USB cable connection, I'm just going to hit eject. And now on my PS Vita, we can continue with setting up our games. So my Vita is ejected, let's turn it back on and we're still in there. I'm gonna press circle to cancel and I can unplug that. We can go back. And now our game should be fully set up on our Adrenaline app. So let's go over there. Load up Adrenaline. No double touch. And then once you load into Adrenaline, go down and your games will be on your memory stick. So let's open that up. And as you can see, and all of the games I have added are placed and ready to be played. So I'll start off with Ridge Racer Revolution. And don't worry if you want to play them through your Vita home menu, then stick around. I'll show you guys after I show you the best settings for Adrenaline. As you can see, the gameplay does not take up your whole Vita screen. So if you want to change that, press and hold the home button until this screen pops up. Click on settings and now we can alter the settings. Go down to open official settings. And here go into other settings, screen mode and then you can choose which mode and you can test through here. So normal, there's zoom, there's full, and you can even customize your proportions. So you can go through here and choose which one you would like. Let's try full. You can change your volume adjustment, your bilinear filtering. You can turn that off or on up to you. You can change your controller settings if you please. But once you have all the settings you want, you can exit and then go play. And now it's taken up the full screen. It looks a little bit better. So now that we've tested our PS1 games, I'm going to hit the home button to exit. I will quit. It'll take us back to here and let's try a PSP game. So this one automatically takes up the full screen, but you can also open up the settings by holding the home button settings. And if you want to improve your graphics on this page right here, you can hit the left and right bumper to go to your save states and then your settings. You can change your graphics filtering to bilinear, sharp bilinear, or advanced anti-aliasing. And this one is your best option. So now that we have our game set up, let's set them up on the Vita home menu. We can double tap to exit Adrenaline, close it. And now we are going to use the Adrenaline Bubbles app. So open this one up the Adrenaline Bubbles Manager, load it up. So you should see this screen where it says Adrenaline Bubble Booter plugin has been installed. We will need to restart our PS Vita. So just press OK. And then it'll give us this message right here. After reboot, we have to open Adrenaline again. So we will make sure to do that. Press OK. It will reboot your device. And then when it turns back on, we're gonna go right into Adrenaline. Once it's back on, find Adrenaline, load it up. And once you see this screen, we can exit by double tapping and closing. Now we're gonna go back into Adrenaline Bubble Manager, start it up, and this time we should get the actual manager. So right here, it'll have a list of all of your games and we'll have an option to add all of these to our Vita home menu. So down on the left here, it gives you a rundown for what buttons do what action. So you can use square to mark each game with a little arrow, or of course, just press triangle and it will install all of the games. You can change the name of each game if you like, but I'm gonna keep them all the same. Just go through all of those and then it will install your games to your Vita home menu. And then we go, they are all green, so that means they are installed. What I did forget to mention is that you can actually customize your bubble. So you can, when you're hovered over the game, you can go left or right to change the color, or you can press the right and left trigger to change the bubble right here. So you can do full screen or just the picture. So you have a couple different options, but now that they are installed, we can press the home button and exit out. And there they are all ready to be played. And you simply play them by starting them up. 
it'll use the exact same settings as your adrenaline environment. And now you can play your games directly from your Vita menu. And if you want to access the settings again, just press and hold the home button just the same way and you can go into settings and change anything you want there. So there you go guys, I hope this video was able to help you out setting up your games and if it did, please hit that like button, it really helps me out. I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>